Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Reddit slash r slash Hex Encounter uh, Wargaming Street from Discord. Again, this is Alec MG, and tonight I am joined by a uh, fellow Redditor and Discord uh, member, Super Vehicle Super from here on forward. And today we're going to be playing Battle for Kursk, The Tigers Are Burning, 1943. This is the current um, uh, magazine game title out of C3I Magazine number 34, published by RBM Studio and um, uh, designed by Trevor Bender. And uh, what we thought we would do is we would invite you to the table and join two people playing the game for the first time, right? Uh, I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that all gaming is good gaming and, um, I, you know, happy to share um, the experiences as he and I go through this for the very first time uh, on, on this title. So, um, super, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, what brought you to uh, what brought you to this game? Why did you want to play this game? Yeah, thanks for uh, playing with me and uh, hosting this stream. Uh, what really brought me to this game is um, I wanted something uh, a little easier just for myself, and uh, I saw a post on Reddit, and it, it looked like something I really wanted. It, it was focused. It's a single scenario. The rules didn't look intimidating, um, and it's something I can play and hopefully get uh, to the table. I have my issues in the mail, so... Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, so we're going to start playing here. Um, and uh, one, one thing uh, as we get going, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of magazine games. And I'm a big fan of magazine games for bringing uh, people into the hobby. It's kind of like a low threat barrier of entry. You pay your, you know, 40 or 50 and you get an interesting magazine with, with a, you know, good articles. You know, not that you couldn't get things like that from our favorite blogs, but sometimes it's just nice to read well-written, well-produced um, print. Uh, but then you also get, you know, a little bite-sized game experience. And some of these are kind of well well designed to be introductions to the hobby and some of them are well designed to solitaire experiences a lot of my favorite solitaire games comes from some of the decision games um, series uh, as well um, and then of course uh, on some of them you get just tremendously high production values and really tight systems and and the c3i games are, are, are kind of really known for that so uh, this game we we end up with um, a, you know reasonable size map it's not a, a small map for a magazine game but but I'd say it's it's a reasonable size one um, and and there's, um, uh, while there's a lot of counters um, reflective of the history here on how long this front was uh, here and how many units were on the front, um, but uh, there's not a counter density. So there's no stacking <laughs> in this game whatsoever, right? The, the units you see are the units that you have. So um, yeah, so so let's go ahead and get into this. I'm playing the German side. Um, Super's playing uh, the... Russians. The game starts us here pretty early, uh, which allows for the players to play the build up and to choose um, build up re repositioning prior to the offensive, and also to do some counterfactuals or some historicals to, to pick different places uh, on where the offensive could have gone. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, scoot down the strategic objective marker that begins the game in Kursk. Um, as you know, the the objective, and and as we play the first um, uh, pregame turns, turns A through D here, I'll have an opportunity as we do so to uh, uh, elect to not do this, <laughs> to to do something else instead. Uh, but uh, with that with that being said, I I uh, um, well we'll 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 I'll leave you I'll leave you in suspense here, super. All right, so uh, game turn A, which is a mud turn, right? Yeah, mud turn. Okay, so we're going to have to remember that uh, um, I will be not doing a lot of repositioning this turn uh, along the line. Uh, we'll start with the posture uh, selection phase, and this is where, you know, um, uh, I, I have a feature request for the next vassal module. I'd like for there to be a nice little hidden posture selection and then, you know, reveal type thing because uh, in, in the game rules, you and I are both secretly choosing and then revealing so i guess we'll just kind of have to do the you know um decide and go now in setup are we set up in the replacement posture no i'm sorry in the uh i'm looking on the wrong side um in the pause posture or do we get to pick on the first i think i think we are set up aren't we uh yeah we begin with the posture segment so um Okay, so um, uh, 
Oh, actually, no. We, we uh, Game uh, six, uh, first step of the procedure here. Place the German previous posture on engage and the Russian previous posture on reposition. All right, so I've got that there. Super, I don't know if you're on mute or not, but... Um... Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, I'm still looking at the posture track, trying to orient myself to the map here. Yeah, and so you are on the bottom right side of the map. Um, uh, and per setup, uh, your previous turn posture is on reposition. So, uh, which is the blue, uh, the blue title. And then the current one will be the one I choose. Uh, on this phase, right. On and I phase, yeah. and we also each take our three offensive markers for each side uh, and put them in the expended holding box, expended side up. So I'll take those, flip, and expend. Oh, okay, you may want to turn on. Well, that's fine. Oh, okay. So the available but expended. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to have mine over and expended. Now yeah, I was just moving, but uh, I have uh, snap two <laughs> on, so I get hopping away from from uh, my oh, vision. Okay. No, it's fine. Okay, so um, we, so we've got that set up. Uh, the uh, units set up are on the board, and uh, they're all nearly all of them are set up at reduced strength, and we'll be able to reinforce them here. Um, many of mine are at full strength, but there are several that are not. And we're going. So here's something um, uh, that you and I can decide real quick. Do you want to do the short scenario where we start on turn one and we, uh, you know, pretty much have skipped turn uh, phases A through D, or do you want to, you know, try and plow through this uh, little dance here uh, for setup? Um, I'd like to go ahead and, and I'm not really sure. Um... Let's go ahead and do the short one first. Okay, so here's the alternative setup then. Um, for the shorter game, um, we skip all this preliminary removing and we start on turn one. In this case, all German units start on their full strength side in their original starting locations, and the Russian player adds 17 infantry and eight armor steps to their units in the original starting locations. So real quickly, I'm gonna go flip all mine over um, and uh, just to do that. So let's see, flip. Flip. And I believe the, the Russians flip, right? You get to choose. So um, uh, you get a certain number of uh, armor steps and a certain number of uh, infantry steps. So I'll call that out to you one more time. It's uh, You may add 17 infantry steps and 8 armor steps. Okay. Commit eight. And I believe that was sixteen infantry flipped. And then eight armor. You get one more infantry if you want it. You get you get seventeen. Oh, seventeen, okay. I flipped two, three, four armor. I lost count of my armor flips here. So yeah, I should have four more armor flips then. You have eight total. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that's what I'm doing. All right. So um, now I get three offensive uh, uh, available offensive markers. You get two. Okay. 
and my previous posture is now deploy and your previous posture is um, I'm sure, I'm not sure if it's I really wish I had a really wish I had a second screen for this <laughs> all right so mine was deploy uh, see when you get your copy in the mail and you can hold the the book in front of you it's, it's yeah there you, know. there you go yeah well i'll tell you what i'll do is i'll look so at, at the back end of the rules they talk to you about the historic postures um here and yours would have been pause historically so yeah i, I suggest we give you the pause uh track and then i guess we can go from there um, yeah, and so interesting. So one of the things that maybe I would have done in turns A through D, of course, you know, could have shimmied folks around the line. I, I don't have a lot of options. If you'll notice here, um, I only have like three units that aren't in contact with one of yours. Uh, I've got uh, the armor in uh, hex. Let's see, what is this? Um, uh, 2009. Uh, the armor and hex 2010, those are not in contact. And then finally, I think I've got one. Nope, those guys are on contact. Uh, I think there's a third one somewhere, but at any rate. You have a, a lonely little infantry unit. Right. Oh, yeah, there he uh, Down at the very bottom. Right. And yeah, so so I, I don't have a lot of freedom to move things around. Now, hypothetically, you could, right? Um, uh, however, you do want to have a little bit of divisional integrity so that you could take use of your offensives, right? Um, otherwise, uh, it's, it's a little bit harder to do that. Okay, uh, and I could also move my objective. I wonder if what would happen if I chose a, like um, Kupiansk. Uh, in 2418 or, or or something a little bit easier to get to maybe i don't know if i could even choose that that's not a major city um maybe tulla just something that's not quite as much of a push but okay so um kursk it is so we are now uh in skipping ahead to turn one on the german side and we are each secretly choosing our posture and then implementing it. So have you secretly chosen your posture? Um, As in decided? <laughs> I, I am undecided. I am still trying to figure out exactly what my objectives are other than just stopping you from gaining yours. Yeah, so for the moment you're going to be stopping. Uh, you will only execute parts of the sequence of play that are color-coded to your posture, right? And so in pause, you pretty much only get your your, your steps that you'd be earning. And you get a few more, right? But but you'd get, be getting steps. If you want to elevate the posture, you may elevate one step for free and additional steps if you expend a posture marker, if I recall. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Um, emergency reaction. If one player chooses engage and the other chooses pause, the player choosing pause may immediately spend an offensive marker to change to reposition. So if yeah, if you have secretly chosen pause and I go, you can, you know, take it back and go to reposition, but ha expend a uh, a marker. Other than that, you're limited to. Uh, oh, and you may choose a posture marker greater than one box to the right by expending an offensive marker for each box greater than one. So if you wanted to hop up to deploy, you could do so at the cost of one offensive. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think I'll stick with just reposition then. Okay, and I'm uh, uh, engaging, knowing that um, I'm going to be a little bit uh, under the gun. So, um, a, yeah. a momentary thing: is there a way I could rotate this board so that the Russian side is on my, the bottom of my screen? If your monitor physically rotates, that's my suggestion. <laughs> okay, um, I don't know if it does that, and I. Don't want to take the time to do it while we're on stream. So, <laughs> that, uh, and, oh, and it does rotate. One second. Let me see if I can get this to work. Remember that your mouse uh, inputs won't. <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay, I'll I'll just deal with it then. Okay, so you <laughs> <laughs> you're going for yeah yeah. <clears throat> It'd be great if you could sit with your opponent though. 
Uh, if, if it helps at all, by the way, if there's a, a toggle in the Vassal module here for chart window menu, and that will bring up the sequence of play uh, and the CRT. Okay, thank you. So you still have to manage, you know, the tracks on the side, um, but but you can read the data tables a little bit easier. All right, so with that, um, we've selected our posture um, and we're going and we're in replacement phase. So starting, or I'm sorry, specifically, we're in my replacement phase. So um, looking at this, I get seven armor steps and one infantry step, which is decremented by one each. So um, I, I add and then subtract. Uh, to get this going. Now, all of my units are at full strength, so I, I don't actually add anything, but I still have to decrement um, uh, to kind of, you know, essentially pay the tax here for um, things breaking uh, and spending fuel and spending, you know, resources. So I have to pick an armor unit and an infantry unit to... Uh, be a little bit less capable. I'll have uh, first Panzer um, 30 infantry core here, take the infantry step loss. Um, and for my Panzer step loss, um, I'm going to choose um, nine infantry 46 core. There we go. All right. So, so that gets me through my replacement phase. I do get armor and rail movement phase. So armor units may move their full movement allowance. Um, infantry units may move by rail. Is that your re recollection? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, now that being said, like, like we were discussing earlier, I don't, unless I want to open a hole in my line, right? I, I don't have a lot I can do. Where, where was that infantry unit again of mine? I. Um, I'm sorry. I had the I had the rule book up. I, I didn't see you move it. No, I didn't move it. I'm I'm still in my initial. Uh, oh, okay. I'm just I'm just wondering where where, where my um, degrees of freedom are. Like I could. Oh, and actually, I'm sorry. Twenty two seventeen Kempf. I forgot to bring to full strength at the start of the game. Okay, so I could pull Kempf out to open straighten out my line a little bit. I don't know if I like that. I suppose I have to decide where my initial push is going to be. Um, and really, I only have the 9th Infantry tanks here that are going to be really helpful with that. So let me do that, though. Let me bring just a couple of movement points here for each of these. Okay, I'm going to shift them over here to kind of help with a, a push on the edge. Yeah, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I, I remember during my solo play just like not being at all uh, happy with the uh, how the CRT ends up working for these initial pushes. Um, but yeah, we'll... We'll see what we can get going. Okay, so that's the end of my armor rail phase, which now brings us to combat. Um, this is something that I wish um, had been updated. I don't know if you've played uh, Next War games at all. or, or um, the... mm -hmm. I have, um, but it's been about three years since I played one. So the current Vassal modules are actually pretty respectable for the Next War series. They're really slick. And, and one of the um, usability features that they have is they have a, a play-by-email menu that brings out a tray of things to designate combats, combat odds, and DRMs um, to just help facilitate communication between the two players on where they're talking about and what, what the, the odds are, which would work perfectly for this game because per the rules, I now need to declare all hexes that are going to have combat, every single one of them, and then we'll resolve them in order. And oh, wow. Yeah, that is uh, pretty hard to keep track of without an extra tool. Yeah, exactly. And so so like what I can do here is, is I can um, 
you know, do um, I'll, I'll enumerate them here in the chat just so just so that we've got it. So I'll I'll uh, in in no specific order. I'll um, let me look what's under that. So I'm I'm thinking about straightening out my straightening out a little bit on um, uh, your west front uh, unit thirty uh, 33rd army. Um, that's got a nice three hex adjacency to me. Um, and so what, uh, let's see, that is hex 1604. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's hex 1704. So that'll be one of them. Let's see. Uh, 1912 will be kind of one of my big hopeful pushes here. Uh, which is your center front, um, uh, 65th Army. And I've just got a lot of bad uh, odds ratios. <laughs> your units have a lot of people in them. Uh, and I've got some pretty understrength infantry um, on the southern end of that. Um, let's see here. Boy, I wonder if you know. We'll work out the math later. Um, let's. But you, you only live once, right? So let's go with uh, twenty-three twenty as another combat. And twenty-seven twenty-three. Okay. So at the very least. Um, I've declared everything. Let's let's go ahead and look at some odds here. And and for grins, let's do one of the ones that maybe is not going to be as awful. So if we look at twenty seven twenty three, let's starting down at the southern end here um, for the combat procedure. So uh, our first step here is to do the total strength, um, and um, then as modified by terrain, uh, we'll get column shifts, but you, you have four, four strength in that hex. I am attacking you with 20 strength, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, which should be, um, five to one, uh, terrain offensive and we're all in communication. So that's fine. Uh, the terrain... Um, looking at the um, somewhere on the bottom left, yeah. So for terrain, now, in, uh, am I in a fortification? You should be, yes. Which will okay. give you uh, a one-column shift. Um, that fortification uh, comes live on turn C. Okay. So you are in a fortification, which gets you a column shift. Um, there is no other terrain. Uh, yeah, there's no other terrain in there that helps you. Um, the 29th core of mine on the uh, holding the end of the line there is um, attacking over land so we're not gonna do the river penalty okay and I think that so one, one unit in the attack negates the river penalty then correct if all units um, are attacking over on a river side. Okay. Yep. Uh, so um, so it's five to one reduced to four to one, uh, due to fortifications. Um, yep. Five to one reduced to four to one. Um, yeah. And so we're good. Uh, so no DRMs in this game, just a straight die roll then on the four to one column six. I think that's good. DE defender eliminated. All right. And then advance after combat for me will be advancing over uh, and keeping my line consistent. Um, do we want to keep, will these lines go away after we move phase? It, it's been a while, I'm sorry, since I've used Vassal. Yeah, no, of course. There's there's a, an MOV button on the right end of the toolbar there that we can use to wipe all of the movement trails. Okay, well, they're, they're handy for now for yeah. this phase, but... Uh, the, as things get going, that will kind of clutter up. The, yeah, for sure. We'll get that. We'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Um, the next combat I like to resolve is 2320. Yep. Um, and so in this case, we are going to have the river penalty because of um, all of my units are attacking from the wrong side of the river. 
you are in a fortification but nowhere else. So straight, uh, you've got six combat factors. I've got 18 for my tanks and another eight from my infantry. Uh, those aren't marshes, are they? No. Okay, so 18 and 8 is 26 uh, to 6, which uh, should be 4 to 1. Does that check? Uh, I believe so. I'd have to get yeah. a calculator. Okay. I'm not really yeah. great at mental math. So, I'm so we'll, call that four, we'll, we'll call that 4 to 1. That, that seems to check. You are in a fortification down to 3 to 1, and I am attacking across the river down to 2 to 1. So that's super. <laughs> so uh roll the four uh on the two to one which is a defender retreat result all right defender retreat and so, now uh, um i didn't i i can retreat through my own units correct i think i retreat you to be honest um oh but, you retreat me. i okay. think so let's let's check that real quick that seemed to be one of the things where or i get to do the first hex like there there are two hexes re there are two hex retreats i believe uh, combat results. Okay, here we go. Um, so defender retreat. Um, move to two hexes by the attacking player as follows. Must end up two hexes away, so I can't, you know, like zigzag. I can't, I have to avoid Ezok, which is, oh, I don't know if I can. Right, because uh, we were talking, yeah. we were talking about generally friendly units don't negate Ezok in this case. Yep. So let's see here. If possible, the unit must avoid entering an Ezok at all times during the retreat. Unavoidable. If the unit must retreat through a hex in an Ezok, it loses a step. But if it's forced to retreat uh, and end its retreat in an Ezok, it is eliminated. So. Well, he's already at half step, so I believe this is eliminated. It now. should. Before I take away uh, one of your tank units, so let's just you know double check um, how Zoc works here. And and for those of you watching on the stream, that are kind of wondering why we're just double checking some of these things, and saw so the last stream where we were looking at really kind of an operational level game that was at the division level. Um, those games end up playing a little bit differently. You'll notice that we've got a lot more X's on these markers in this Eastern Front scenario. So these are core and army size units, um, which would represent pretty much everything that was on the board in next war Vietnam. So um, things are just a little bit different. <laughs> um, six units. Yeah, okay, so this might be a point for um, clarification later, um, but there's no there's no mention in paragraph in section seven where it talks about Ezox that for purposes of, of really anything that um, uh, uh, that that they are negated and looking in seven point two their combat effects. Um, you know, we've got that a unit exerts a Zoc into each of the six hexes surrounding it, including hexes occupied by enemy units explicitly. So, yeah, so you have to retreat through a Zoc. Um, and so in doing so, you lose a step eliminating the unit. All right. And then advance after combat. Well, I'm going to be sliding up a panzer in there. <laughs> <laughs> And hoping for a nice outbreak. Okay, I'll take that. So that's two combats. Um, oh, I should have. Um, you okay if I retcon one that I didn't declare 2218? I don't think I declared. Uh, go that. ahead. Yeah, I, I had missed that you hadn't enforced that as a as a unit that you were reinforcing. And and uh, any place where I've got a three to one. Well, let me let me add the steps here. But anywhere I see a three to one on a weakened unit. I'm I'm liking my op, my my chances here. So, um, oof, boy, or twenty two nineteen, boy, which one of those would I have done? Um, I would have done the infantry because I needed the armor uh, against the combat that we just did. So um, let's see, I've got eleven factors to your four. Oh, see, this is not good. <laughs> um, no, I have more than eleven. I have twenty one factors to your yeah, four. Like this is. So can you hear me? So twenty one factors to your four is a four to one. Um, Three to one for the row. Yeah, it would be pretty much the same odds. 
Yeah, I would do that. Okay, so let's let's do 2218 as long as we're here. Um, so I read this as being the same as the last one. You are in a fortification. I've got 21 factors to your four. That's, oh, that's five to one. One shift for river, one okay, shift, shift. For, yeah. for fortification. So this should be a three to one. Yep. Okay. Oof. Defender, re uh -oh. uh, defender loses a step and then retreats. Well, he's already at half health, so he's eliminated. Okay, and advance after combat here. All right. Mm. Okay, that'll do. So now, getting back to the things that I think I was saying I was doing at for first. Boy, I'd really, you know, again, I'd love to have little markers I sprinkled over the board that we can check off, right? Um, mm -hmm. 1912. Have we done that one yet? That's up here. I don't believe so. Where is 1912? Oh, yeah, that's gonna be my big one, and that's gonna be one where we're gonna go ahead and practice one of the uh, one of the the um, using an offensive. So I'll go ahead and dedicate an offensive on um, the 46th Armor Corps on this one, which will allow me to bring in two units adjacent to him uh into the combat or you know really anyone into the combat um boy i guess so, it effectively it mimics stacking in other games then by uh, allowing a additional combat power it does but you don't then have to physically reposition them so they they are still present where they are having a zog so for instance the 41 uh uh, uh panzer corps there um is still plugging a hole in the line right mm -hmm. So if, if I say, and I think the, if I go to my attack before that, it's much further up, 1704. Um, yeah, 1704 is way up here. Um, I'm just making sure that I can commit this piece and not regret my life choices. Okay, yeah, so I can commit all three armor uh, to that offensive that are adjacent to the 46th. But, uh, so let's run through that. So, um, so in this case, um, the... Three, I've got three units attacking it, uh, the two infantry and the armor. So I've got 16, 20 factors attacking eight. So that's two to one, right? So 20 factors attacking eight at two to one. Um, I declared my offensive. Let me just double check, skimming the offensive rules here briefly. Just one paragraph, 9.2.1. Um, units behind the line to participate. This is done by designated lead. All others not adjacent, um, but are adjacent to the lead. Same, and they must be the same organization. Shift the odds. Okay, so this is interesting. I, I, I'm willing to play this either way because I think it's uh, it's a good interpretation both ways. Rules as written, it seems to me on a quick read here that I could involve. The forty-first there, the ten-six armor, the ten-six armor unit um, on the line. However, you know the discussion on the roll really does talk about bringing in folks from behind the line, right? That you are that you have a reserve that you are committing, and that this is an offensive. And so I, I think I'm actually maybe more inclined to play this rules as intended, which which may be um, that I'm committing my reserve, right? I moved them over there. That that was my reserve, not the forty-first. Um, I mean, I. Like you said, rules is written, and if you would want to play those as written, that, that's fine with me. Yeah, I'll go ahead and play it rules as intended here. I, well, what, what I think rules as intended, right? Um, yeah, which I think works thematically. So, okay, so I'll, give, I'll just give myself those two shifts. So it's two to one based on combat odds. Um, shifting for um, uh, offensives brings me to four to one. You are in your defensive belt at three to one. And I think that's what we have. And, uh, okay, yeah, I see that. Okay, so three to one, roll to three. Defender retreats. Now this is okay. going to be interesting. I can't get him to not stack. <laughs> yeah. I. How do we adjudicate that then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good question. Okay, uh, we retreat. Uh, 
It may not end its retreat in an enemy-occupied hex. Else, if there's no retreat path which satisfies the above, the unit is eliminated. So okay. sorry. <laughs> so I, I, that there is a way to block my own retreats. That's good to know. Well, yeah, you just pile it up too deep. And so maybe this here, um, boy, I can think of a couple of different um, uh, uh, in character ways, right? Thematic ways to do this, be it the political officers here forcing that unit to stand its ground and just get ground to mm -hmm. dust, or they're just not being, they're just being too poor logistics flow, right? Like they couldn't use the roads to get out of there. Whatever it was, that did not work. Uh, I, I like the commissar idea. It's like <laughs> the, com the commissars, their pistols weren't for shooting the enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, no, for sure. All right, so I'll go ahead and advance the infantry in there. Now, I'll take a brief pause here um, before I move on to my fourth combat. Um, we're, we're joined by a few new people here on the stream in the Discord, and so I'd like to, to welcome both of you for joining us. And, uh, you know, think about this. I want us all to think about this as, you know, all being around the table on a weekend, right, at your friend's house. And, and so hopefully you're all holding your adult beverage of choice and there's pretzels on the corner. And if you want to tell me I'm an idiot for doing something or something, pipe up. Feel free to come up on mic. So I'll take a moment here before I tell you the final attack, just to let anyone that's uh, um, on uh, sitting at the table here, feel free to say hi and introduce yourself and, you know, let us know what you think of. Trevor Bender, can you hear me okay? Trevor, I got you. All right. I just joined about seven minutes ago, and I think you guys are doing a great job interpreting the rulebook. I'm really impressed. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. And thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. On that no retreat rule, if you look at page four, excuse me, zone of control rule, at the yeah. very bottom of page four, right-hand column, under the Zoke diagram, it talks about how Zokes are not negated by any of this at all. Right, right. You see that's in italics. So you, inter you interpret it correctly. Okay, excellent. Well, and, you know, one of my big philosophies here, you know, uh, which I tend to say on a lot of my streams is it's, it's also important when you get into situations like this where it's, uh, you know, uh, best not to let the rule get in the way of the game, right? And if you come up with something that both you and your opponent can believe and rationalize and try and be consistent with, just go with it, have the fun. And so in this case, you know, relying on our intuition uh, <laughs> worked out well for us. So that was good. Thanks. <laughs> So can you give me some background? Where did you guys start the scenario? Are you on turn A or turn Ah, good question. Okay, um, hopefully you are seeing the, um, uh, you should be seeing the stream uh, uh, here in Discord. So you should be seeing my view uh, of the stream if you're in the Discord channel. Um, we started- All I'm getting is audio. How do I, I'm not very good at Discord. This is all my second time. So what do I do to that? that? It's a fair question. Can I get confirmation from uh, Super or Oliver that you're seeing video? I am indeed seeing video. Um, you have to uh, click on Alex's name, and then you should see a, a thing that says live, and then um, it sh you should be able to see start watching stream. Um, if you're on mobile, I don't know that exact process. I'm sorry. And I am on mobile. Good point. Okay. Well, fair enough. Uh, to answer your question, we uh, decided to do, for the purposes of uh, you know flexing the game muscle and understanding the system, to do a uh, we we're, we're starting here on turn one using the accelerated start rules, um, bringing most of the units up uh, to strength and position. Um, and, and for the moment, I'm simply exploiting all of the under strength uh, linchpins that he left me, <laughs> and <laughs> trying to work out my line. All right. Well, I, even though I can't see it, I'll listen in and feel free to chime in if you got any questions. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So which leaves us here uh, with the attack in uh, 1301, I think. No, 1704. Um, what am I doing? I should have done 1301 again, you know, with that understrength thing there. Um, I, I might ask your indulgence on that. Ret Ooh, maybe not. Let me, let me do the math on that. But I may ask your indulgence <laughs> on retconning, declaring that. Uh, go ahead and retcon away. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, the so, next time I play this, I will look for those uh, triple hex attacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I was just trying to get the game moving. I I don't usually stream, so I probably wasn't thinking um, no. super strategically. But 
Well, no, that's fine. And, and this is kind of one of those gamisms, right, where where uh, you have to have a grid to regulate movement and placement. Right? You just have to. And, and so one of the things that you end up with hexes is depending on which 30 degree orientation you have on your hex grid. Right. You, you have every everyone with a two to one, you know, matching or you'll have these opportunities here for three to ones. Um, and. And so gameism, if you're playing it, you know, <laughs> yeah, look for opportunities to exploit three to ones. And when you see yourself in a three to one, uh, you know, try not to be <laughs> or try to be at least strong there. Um, so, OK, so working on uh, the strong three to one that we have in uh, 1704, uh, you have an, your eight strength, 33 army. I am working with two infantry corps and a panzer corps uh, here at 16 and 5. Boy, that understrength infantry corps. Um, 18 and 5 is 23. Uh, 23 to 8 is not quite 3 to 1, Trevor. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so that's a 2 to 1 attack. Uh, I am not going across the river uh, exclusively, uh, but I am going into the fortification. So I think that brings us to a one-to-one, -one, ever so barely. Um, yep. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, the the dice are probably... Uh, this is going to be terrible, actually. I've got a third chance of losing a step myself. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know, take my justice search and I'll roll a six. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Exchange. Exchange, um, yeah. Defending uses one step. Attacker loses at least one amount of strength. Then I retreat. Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm trying to find 1703. Oh, and remember um, that that the attacker chooses the retreat path. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I am oh, going... Oh, that was 1704. I'm sorry. You were at 1703? Uh, no, you're right. You're right. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. It was 1704. I'm sorry if I misspoke there. Yeah, 1704. Um, and so, let's see, I took my step, and I'm going to push you one, two. Okay. Okay, and then I will plug that hole with my panzer. And now I have the three to one. With a panzer, mind you. True. Okay, and so now let me let me just do the math before I uh, officially declare this retcon. You've got your understrength 43rd Army in hex 1301. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the woods, though, right? And the woods, uh, let's see, what do we have here for the forest? The forest gets you a column shift in addition to the column shift for your fortification. So that's going to be two column shifts. I can at most bring, let's see here, 7 and 5 is 12 and 6 is 18. So I can bring 18 against your 4, which is a 4 to 1. Two column shifts. Oh, but one of them's coming out of a marsh. If I learned anything from wargaming, attacking from a marsh is a terrible plan. Yeah. So oh, I see that. Yeah. Combat strength of all is uh, is halved when attacking out of that the marsh. All right. So um, dropping the fraction there, retaining fraction. Okay. Um, so that's actually a three and a half. So I've got five and six is eleven and three and a half is 14 and a half to four yeah so okay so that's three to one then with the two column shifts gets us to one to one and that's a terrible idea so okay i was wise to not have stated that attack <laughs> <laughs> and and we will move on uh with the turn okay so that gets us to our combat phase through our combat phase uh and i will now go into my movement phase and so um and this is a, a full movement to include my various infantry um, so I'll go ahead and move those movement trails and expand this offensive. Okay. And now figure out where I want who, whom. I think I'm going to... Do... So you're going to get some steps here when you start your turn, right? Right at the very start of your turn. What's your posture? Your posture. Uh, I believe my posture is... Reposition. Reposition. Yeah, so you're going to get everything, right? So you're going to get two armor steps and three infantry steps. And so I can look here at like hex 2110 and think, all right, I'm, you know, there, that's your three to one, right? And then realize, well, wait a minute. Because <laughs> both of those guys could plus up here real quick. Um, so I'm trying to be a little cognizant of that as well, that, that you will be playing off the board that I am not looking at, right? 
Um, so let me reposition this this infantry there. Mostly just trying. I'm still maintaining my army integrity here. I'm just trying to keep. Uh, um, position myself where my subsequent offensives are going to be fine or if I need to um, uh, have a solid line after you force a retreat then I'm okay but again I've got too many units and too big of a front so I think that's about all I can do without opening something up for you yeah okay all right well I think with that good sir I will turn over the turn to you now. So we are now in Russian replacement phase and you have three infantry steps and two armor steps for units in communication. Okay, sorry, I thought I was uh, disconnected. Um, Trevor, if you go on mobile and anyone else who wants to watch the stream, um, if you go to the sidebar, you can just tap on Alex's uh, icon and it will bring up a uh, half screen and then you can watch stream. I accidentally tried to do some stuff by watching it on mobile and also staying on the stream. It, Discord didn't like being logged into two places, so. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm back. I was trying to solve the. Well, welcome back. I uh, <laughs> ran through the remainder of the German uh, phases, and you are now at yep. Russian replacement with three infantry steps and two. Um, uh, armor steps. Hmm. I have to consider what to place these in. Yep. And I'll, while well, you're considering, uh, I will consider the plight of the unit uh, 44 army and 28, 24. You are against your map edge that is in supply. Um, you know, but that guy's pretty hemmed in. So that's an interesting um, nuance here on the uh, communication rules. I'm pretty sure you're fine on the map edge. I'll just read into that while you're dropping your steps. Okay. That guy uh, on the southern end of your line is fair game if you're looking for a step for him. Okay. But you've got a lot of understrength units, so. Mm Well, what I'm trying to make sure is that I haven't left any more three uh, adjacent hex hexes uh, under strength. I see. So the, the spots where you have um, a lot of uh, frontage, you want to make sure that. Mm -hmm. And I, you said I get two armor? Uh, yes, it's up there on the turn track. Uh, you should have three infantry and two armor. Um... Oh, I see. Yep, first guard in 2219 looks pretty juicy to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got four on that guy. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find where this is. Well, you know what? He's not in communication, I think. Uh-oh. Because he was the one I was about to flip. Yeah, right. Uh, so in order to receive a step, they must be in communication. And communication defined uh, at the top left on page 10 of the rules. Um, it can path hexes from himself any length through any terrain. 
to a map border edge for you that's red. Uh, excluding the origin hex, it cannot go through any enemy unit or EZOC or an enemy controlled city. And so 2318 has an EZOC and 2319 has an EZOC, right? Since units don't negate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he is not, not in communication. He has his six combat factors. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Um... Hmm. Feel free to, you know, verbally do train a thought here. Help us know what you're thinking. Well, um, what I'm thinking is, um, since I clearly, I, I didn't really do as much thought to my which units I would um, go back to full strength in our, um, before we started, I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any more holes open up in my line. Um, I'm also considering flipping uh, 2418, um, and then using that to plug in the gap, and then moving um, twenty two nineteen back um, back into communication for another turn to get him back to full strength, um, just to shore up my own line so I don't have this uh, you know four hex adjacency. Um, I also don't like how isolated some of the other places are. Um, luckily that swamp is preventing me from really worrying about the unit up in 1301. Yeah, I've just got bad terrain on the north end of your line. Mm -hmm. You've got a river and a forest and fortifications, and I'm in the muck. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, really, the only reason that those units would be in, uh, concerned is if my, uh, um, uh, the 4th Infantry rolls up the line, right? Mm hmm Like, if I, if I cut those guys out, but that's it. Yeah, and then that would stop. Uh, so, from what I understand, that would stop communication through my entire line if I no longer touch that red. Um, so, let's say you eliminate 1200, right? Or if you cut through 1300, I would no longer be touching either of the sides. Um, well, so 1,200 is in supply no matter what I ever do because he's on the edge, right? And so yeah. he would be fine. 1,301 may have problems. In fact, 1,301 would have a problem. But 1,402 would be fine, right? So you, you, oh. um, that being said, I really don't see myself knocking out 1,300 without a few more chits. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, okay. So... All right, I'm confused as to why. Where am I? Um, Twenty-two nineteen is out of communication. I need to. What section are those rules again? I need to look up the communication rules. Yeah, so twenty-two nineteen. All right, so the communication uh, rules are on page ten. Um, uh, in replacements, uh, and it's just before section ten dot one, where it defines in communication. And in this case, it's being able to uh, uh, trace a path of hexes free of enemy units or EZOC to the red border. To, okay. And so in, in, in that unit specific case, since, you know, rivers don't negate EZOC, units don't negate EZOC, right? Um, uh, my 24th armor, uh, you know, gives him, uh, cuts him off from 2319, and my 11th Infantry Corps cuts him out in 2318. So he's not in communication to receive a step, although you could move him during your movement phase. I guess what I'm saying is I thought I had to trace... Oh, okay, so I don't have to trace a line of units, I have to trace just an uninterrupted hexes back to the, to exactly. the, line, to the yep. line okay sorry i i was momentarily confused i thought i had to maintain a perfect line or be cut off 
No, 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 no that's fine. And and that's kind of one thing I, I do appreciate about uh, this game and how this works given the very large scale of it is, one, you, you couldn't do this game without supply rules, right? And, and mm-hmm. I, I think... Uh, uh, Viceroy uh, and I discussed in the Vietnam stream is uh, whether or not you need supply rules in modern operational games, and, and we agreed that you absolutely do. But in this game, it's, it's absolutely you need it. But given the big scales of them, um, you know, it it, it, can, it can be actually fairly simple. And so in this case, yeah, it's just tracing the line of hexes. Um, so for, so for the moment, that guy doesn't get a step, but you've got a lot of other good candidates, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, 2722 uh, is my next favorite guy to kill, by the way. If... And maybe 2824. I mean, like, I don't know how concerned you are down there, but so my thinking on attacking you on the southern part is, um, again, I don't have a lot of free units. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I could potentially, maybe this is a little bit of a gameism, but if I roll you up a little bit down there, I could potentially garrison you redeploying to that part of the map with two units instead of three, which gets me one more unit to float around. Ah, I see what you mean. So. So anyway. Now I, I can move out of an Ezoc into an Ezoc. I right? believe so. That's my recollection. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to flip this one. Um... Uh, this one. Uh, confirmed. You can move from an Ezoc to an Ezoc as your first and only move. <laughs> so that's one, two infantry. One more infantry. You can flip. So 28, 27, and 24. Yep, so the various hexes I was calling out. <laughs> now, I will say, again, I, I can probably tell you a lot more places I'm thinking about attacking than you could <laughs> fortify, right? 2319, mm-hmm. once you do your retreat, will be triply exposed. Mm. If you retreat, maybe maybe the first guard, you know, goes down with the ship. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I definitely don't want you to get to that town. But I also have some in reserve I can move through. I might flip this one. I'm thinking of flipping this one and bringing him in to plug that line and then just pretty much kissing those other two goodbye. Sounds like a plan. Um, And so that was my last flip for infantry. Um, Tanks. And see, I saw that you did one armor. uh, Second guard, right? You just flipped that? Yep. Okay, so that's one of them. You get one more. I got Okay, I got one more. Um, Nothing already up on the line, really. I see you've got the two um, lavender units. back a little bit yeah Tola. they're kind of back there um, oh you got one on the line nope that's the one i'm sorry it's the same one that is out of communication yeah he's out of communication um i could do 25 20. i'll just do 25 20. he's the only one on the line 
I mean, he's not in much danger right now, though. So maybe I don't want to flip him. I'm trying to avoid slowing down, slowing our game down and busting out math every time I want to see which one I want to flip. But, <laughs> um, attacking across a river into that. That's 6-5. I don't... I think that un I really think that unit's good there. Um, with only a 15 to a 6 with two column shifts, I, I don't think you would actually attack there, even though it is weakened. Uh, um, this one, I may actually want to use him for an offensive, so I'm going to flip him. Okay. The, the unit in 2216. Uh, the sixth guard? Okay. Yep, the sixth guard. Okay, and that's my replacements. Um, then it goes to the armor. No, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read sideways. Armor and rail, but that's only in. Oh yeah, you're in a different phase. You are re you're in reposition. I'm in reposition only, uh -huh. so I don't get armor and rail. I don't get combat. So you're down to movement. Mm-hmm. Okay, so movement in this game, uh, you, you get a lot of choices here, given how deep you are. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we are not in a mud turn, so you're free there. Uh, movement factors are printed on the right. Every hex counts as one to move into, unless it's forest or marsh um, or rough. And yeah, and if you're, you can use, if you, you, you can use rail to move things further up. Um, but mm -hmm. right now I don't think you've got anything far enough back where that will play. No. Um, all right. Well, he's considering his movements again. I'd like to welcome everyone that's joining us on the stream. And if you uh, want to say hi, introduce yourself, or give us your opinion, again, just consider yourself uh, to be virtually around the table. What are you thinking about your first guard? Are you thinking about straightening that out? Um, I'm sorry, the first guard, which unit is that? That's that's the way exposed armor. Um, oh, Karkov. yeah, I'm thinking about straightening that out, but I was just kind of working my way up from the bottom. Um, I see. I moved um, the 44th infantry up. Out of your fortification? Uh, that's right, out of the fortification. <laughs> I just didn't like that gap in my line, but what is that? If I leave the fortification. So the fortification take... is a column shift. Yep. Um, that would actually be very difficult for you to push through because that would take one, two, three. It would take you quite a few turns to get past. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the, the unit down in two, uh, 26, 24. Yeah. Cause I don't want to get rolled up. Like you said, like you wanted to do, but at the same time, um, yeah, I would be giving up that fortification. Hmm. I, I think I'll, if anything I'll... else, he's a nuisance down there. Mm -hmm. Just because he keeps projecting that Zoc on yep. those two down there. Okay, then I guess I will leave him. Um, just don't like holes in my line. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... Well, 2219 can't move out of the way. There is no position where he does not cross your Zoc and have to stop. 
So, but that's just it, right? He could straighten out into 2318. True. Which puts him back in communication. Ah, okay. I see what you mean. I'll probably do that then. So that does get him out of very defensible terrain. Uh, but, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's see. A forest, one column, fortification, river. That doesn't mean I also can't swap positions with an infantry unit to try and really clog that spot back up. Correct. You could put an infantry... Uh, I believe that that would work. Unless Trevor wants to do an on-the-spot correction. But but that being said, whoever's... Oh, right. Push that. Uh, no, because that guy would have to stop uh, on the first Zoc that he entered. Oh, I see. You I could see potentially that. do a shell game and shove 2319 over there. And then bring uh, the the sixth army. Uh, that's the reduced strength unit. Hmm. Oh, I see what you mean. And if you want to retcon finding him a step, that's fine. And uh, uh, sure. Oh, I see what you mean. Um. So this one wouldn't have been a step, and I would have stepped this one. Right. And so if you do that, right. now he goes in full strength. And then I and then I switch places. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, th thanks for the coaching. Uh, that is definitely the better decision. Yeah, and so now if I do an attack there, I still get the out-of-communication bonus against that guy, but mm -hmm. it's now a much harder problem, and you still have all the defensive benefits. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this unit back. And with a movement of six, I think I can move this tank unit here. Correct? I believe so. We can move through units as long as you don't end in them for friendly units, okay. right? As long as there's not an Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in that case, um, I believe so. And I believe there's penalties for a river. No, there is no penalties for crossing a river. Nope, none whatsoever. I'm going to bring this unit right here. Actually, I don't know if I want to do that because... If I go too deep on my line, I'll end up eliminating units if I'm forced to retreat. Right. Hmm. I don't think I want to go more than two units deep, because then I had the just problems start happening. Um... see if I can shuffle anything around that would be advantageous this turn. Um, I think I will at least just put him in that forest just to get him closer to the front. Um, and the same goes for that tank unit in... I can't pronounce that. Fornage? Okay. Okay. There is no marker underneath that strategic objective. Oh, there is. Um, so I do have a unit there. Um, all right, I'm going to quickly look at the rules for the rail. Oh, I can only do rail movement on a rail movement turn, correct? I think you can do rail movement at any time as long as you started not in an Ezoc on a rail. Okay, because I, I see step seven is armor and rail movement. That's right. So you can only do infantry if they are on a rail in step seven. Okay. So armor can always move on a rail. Um, Is that what you're saying? Um, armor can always I move don't... on any movement step. Okay. Infantry can only move on the rail movement if they are using rail movement. Okay. 
I'm going to control F real here on the rule book and see how far that gets me. Now, often in games, there's a strategic move or a rail move, right? But um, mm -hmm. does that increase my movement range of these of the tanks there and War Edge right there? I don't think or so. I think edge. I okay. think that... still five. Yeah, I believe that they just have theirs, and remember that um, it costs two to move into woods. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna move him down here. I'm not gonna go with rail up at Kursk. Uh, I believe oh. that'll be all my movement then. So quick quick correction. Uh, infantry rail movement is only phases 3 and 7. So outside of phase 3 and 7, they are just using their movement allowance doing moves. Okay. So there's that. Okay. All right. Um, so there we are. And uh, that gets us to the end of the uh, Soviet movement phase. Which brings us to the housekeeping phase, which will nudge us over from turn uh, one to turn two. All right. So now we go into the, that secret posture selection. Um, my um, current turn posture becomes my past turn posture. Um, my, where did, okay. I'm, uh, I, I moved lost it. track of my posture yeah. marker my it's, it's, previous the reverse of it is the phase marker oh okay okay so um i need to pay an armor and a infantry for me going and staying and engaged and I'm already going to have to actually pay an armor. So so really, I want to have to eat. If I want to stay and engage, which is what gives me combat, I'm going to have to pay two armor steps to do that. Uh, that's my cost. Uh, and I'll net zero infantry steps. Uh, I believe I get a... Or is that at the start of my turn? I get a offensive marker plus one. Yes, yes, you do. You get that now. You get that in the posture. Oh, I get that now. Okay. Yeah, you get, get that in posture. All right. So, okay. Um, yeah, and you've got a nice big fat set of steps coming. So I'm feeling pretty good about the strength of my units on the line, right? I'm not, not feeling I need to um, slow down to reconstitute, but I'm not getting that much, right? Like this is probably the poorest turn for me aside from turn eight on what I'm going to be getting. Um, and panzers are everything. That being said, I think I probably could have done more last turn, and I didn't. So let me give one more turn. All right, all right. So I'm considering the extent to which I keep pushing right now. I think I might just push a lot. We'll see. Okay. I have secretly committed to my phase. Have you done the same? Um, yes, I am going to spend a offensive counter and jump up uh, a posture. To engage? To engage. Oof. So we are both engaging. This will be this will be nice. All right. So which puts me at um, my uh, reinforcement. I get I have to I get to place an infantry step and then remove an infantry step. Um, only two infantry units eligible for replacement. Put one. Put one here. 
Uh, there we go. And I will choose to take one away. Uh, you are not doing a lot for me anyway, so I will take your step. <laughs> All right. Um, and now I have to pay two armor steps, which is a travesty. Very sad. So armor... Why do you have to pay two armor steps? I only see a negative one on the track. So I have the negative one on the track, but if you um, hide pieces and look under my current turn posture marker, you'll see that it costs me one infantry replacement point and one armor replacement point uh, mm. to be in that posture. Oh, okay. So I'm slowly grinding through. All right, really, why is that not... Um, slowly grinding through my my panzers. Ah, okay. So I see that um, engage will cost me two infantry replacements and two armor. Right. So essentially, I've just negated any armor steps that I would gain. Right, but you know, if you got plus one and minus one, you still get to move it around. Right, you can put one mm -hmm. in some place and remove True. it. From from the back okay mm -hmm. so and i've got to get my second ss from fourth panzer into the fight because that's just a lot of combat power all right let me uh skim through uh and find the places on this line that i want to try and pick apart real quick um So looking at hex 1502, that's no, 1603, no, not strong enough. Your uh, 10th guard um, in 1703 is too strong for me to have a crack at. Um, looking at 49th uh, army, um, I can get two to one. That's all I can get on that guy. Uh, so that's no. You know, it's it's I, I you have to think that the designer did some of this, um, you know, tweaking a little bit deliberately to uh, you know make it so that there are you know two to ones versus three to ones in some of these opening positions, right? Like looking here against the 50th armor in hex 1906. Um, you know, I've got two eight to fours against your eight to four, and I can bring a six to four, but that doesn't buy me much. All right. Yeah, so I'm not liking a lot of the stuff that I've got up on that part of the line. It's kind of like I'm, you know, I moved my tank in to my 39th Panzer, in, and uh, now there's not a lot for him to do. Mm, that's a travesty. All right. Um, my 9th Infantry still has a lot of offensives left in it so i can think about what i'm doing there oh actually i'm sorry i'm in movement aren't i uh -huh. um armor and uh, infantry rail movement so So the only people I consider moving using that are my tanks again in uh, the 9th Infantry uh, Army. And I think that that is what I do to give myself some good flexibility on... Well, actually, I kind of like those where they were. Yep, okay, so I'm going to forego movement. I don't think there's any place I want to go. So I'll start to claim those combats. Um, I will attack Hex um, 2000, and I think this is 12. Yeah. So we'll do uh, Hex 2012. Why? 
my uh Uh, keyboard is not interacting appropriately with uh, Basil for some reason. I'll tell you what, let me work that out real quick. Um, this might be a good spot for us if we wanted to uh, quickly um, do a bio refresh in our beverage. I will get my Basil working again and uh, sure. I will uh, join back up in what do you say, five or ten minutes? Yep, sounds good. All right, well, see you all back here shortly. All right, and we are back, and it looks like um, I've worked through my uh, issues here on Vassal. So, yeah, so the first uh, attack that I'm going to declare is going to be uh, 2012, which is, um, yeah, oh, it's, uh, wonderful, attacking into a marsh. Well, that's probably going to be easier to do than not, but it's going to be lovely fighting out of there. Um, uh, I don't believe there's any combat effects when attacking into when attacking out of yeah so that's gonna be a great place for me to get stuck in <laughs> all right uh so there's that um i think i'm also going to be working on oh boy uh so if i do that uh i could get again these understrength infantry units are just killing me all right the aok2r uh here in hex 1814 uh four what am i supposed to do with four um mm. not good not good uh all right um let me let me um have some fun here. I'm also going to declare a hack, uh, an attack on Hex 2115. Um, uh -oh. That's in the middle of the line where it's all two to two, but your units and eight and my two units there are 16s. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can't just let my strongest panzers sit stuck on a line, right? Like that's mm -hmm. not a good plan. Let me look at the southern part of this front. Feel free to let me know if you find any place that you think would be good for me to attack. He says to his opponent. Uh, uh, I'm actually trying to figure out where I might be able to attack. Um, oh, right, because you're engaged. Although, yeah, I, I went ahead and flipped to engage. Right. Um, so I'm not really sure where it'd be good, because I don't really have much in the way of follow-up options. Well, and things are going to change a little bit here as you retreat from my attacks. Right now I'm trying to figure out if attacking 2219 outside of Kharkov is a terrible idea. That's that's that hex that we were looking at before. Oh, it's out of communication. Yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. Okay, so, right. So 2219, uh, which is out of communication next to Kharkov, is, is... Oh, which also means that guy can't retreat. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he could, and he, he'd take a stop loss. So if he's at full strength and retreats, he's okay. Yes, okay, so that, that one for sure. Um, Still, I'd rather use an, lose an infantry army than lose a tank, so... Yeah, without a doubt. Boy, I just have a lot of not good odds on the rest of these. Um, like I feel like, given how few how few turns we have here, in which I will be attacking, right? Because I gotta feel that I'm gonna be shifting posture to build some strength here. That I've gotta be covering more ground. Um, but the odds are just so bad. These are really, really terrible odds. Like I can open up a hole in my line and have moved a tank around maybe? Uh, I don't know. Um, just 
trying to find all the less terrible places to attack. I'm not finding any. Uh, yeah, so that's the attack there. Well, um, I just saw some something. Mm, oh no, you attacking? already you're already attacking it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question in the chat: So each counter represents corps or armies? Yes. In, the, in this case, all the Soviet counters represent armies, and all the um, uh, German counters represent corps. Uh, and so th these are very, very large formations. <laughs> yep, don't like it. Uh, oh. I didn't uh, read what the hex scale is for the for this map, um, and I don't believe it's on the map. <laughs> Nothing's in the book here. You're back to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I so I'm looking at all my two to ones or my three to ones, and I'm just not seeing the odds I'd like. I guess I'll just go with what I've got and, and beg your indulgence on any retcons as we play this out. But mm -hmm. I'll start with what I've declared in the order that I declared it. So 2012 um, is yeah, boy. That's, that's the first combat that I found that I liked. Miserable. Okay, so 2012. I was going to declare this one inoffensive. Um, from here. And so... Um, I'm not going to invoke... Well, of course I am. Okay, so I've got... 14 combat factors against him. Um, and I may as well bring in the other eight. So so 22 combat factors to eight, which is two to one. Um, plus two shifts for the armor I'm bringing in. So two to one to four to one. Um, I am attacking across land and I'm attacking into um, a fortress. So that should bring it back to a three to uh, one final odds. Aren't you also attacking across a river? Not exclusively. Um, I've got the hex 2011. That is a land hex and hex 19, uh, 1912. 2011. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. So this should be on the three to one. Okay. Roll the four is an exchange defender loses one step and the attacker loses at least as much strength and then the defending unit retreats so i have to suffer four um so okay so that's mine and then you retreat two and the only legal place for me to put you is here retreating in exactly that path mm-hmm Okay. Uh, so that was the one that I declared. The next that I declared was two two one one five. Right, that, that was the one that's double up. So I've got thirty two combat factors against eight. That's four to one, and you are in defensive terrain for. I'm sorry, you are in um, fortification. fortification for three to one. Oof. Uh oh. What happens with that one? You live to fight another day. Ah, defeater, a defending unit retreats by two hexes by the attacker. Okay. See, and this is a little, a little uh, not good because now I actually need to pick one of these guys to advance into there. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and look at that pocket. 12, 6, 12, mm -hmm. 5, 6, 5, 8, 4. <laughs> For the moment. Boy. Okay. Well, yeah, there's that. Um, you know what? Okay, so retconning a little bit, it occurred to me that if I can... can uh, get 
1914 here, the 39th uh, Army, uh, into a retreat. That's good. I just don't, this, these are just terrible units. I've got a 4 and a 6 and a 10 and a 5. I can't even get a 2 to 1 before the shifts. So, yeah, I can't attack that guy. That guy's too strong holding the corner there. All right. What was the next one I had planned on doing? It was uh, 2219. Uh, 20, yep, yeah, that's, that's this guy that's on a four to one. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, I've got, um, 17 from the armor and six is 23 and five is, uh, 28 to eight, which should be, um, uh, three to one. Yeah. So that's three to one. And then forest and... Uh, uh, fortifications gets us to one to one and out of communication gets us back to two to one okay uh oh that's not good for him okay so yeah the exchange happens though so you lose a step and then I lose a step and then you die by retreat <laughs> <laughs> alright so you lost ah, yep. you lost four strength there on the exchange Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that's actually got to, has to come from an armor, regrettably. Uh, why does why does that? I didn't I, see that. Oh, so on exchange, I have to lose the exact uh, the same number of strength points or more, and mm. so, and so you lost four combat factors in the exchange. So um, the forty seventh armor um, I, does not have enough strength when I reduce it. I that is not an equivalent exchange. This 11th, I'm sure, doesn't either. Those both would lose three. So in order to get enough, I could lose one from each of those infantries, which is, I really do love my armor, so I might actually do that. Um, mm -hmm. Although you got that 12 right there. I uh, don't like that. So I could just take from the armor and move in. All right. Um... And that's the end of my planned attacks. You don't see anything else I could do against your southwest or southern uh, fronts that have... Uh, not that would be advantageous. I mean, you could attempt um, in 27-22, but that's... No, like... In I, rough terrain. Yeah, I don't think I can get one-to-one -one on that. No, I don't think you can. I, think I mean, like, I, I'm one-to-one -one before we start shifting. <laughs> it's, it's just too weak. Okay, well, I guess that's I guess that's what I do. So now now I move into my movement phase, uh, which will help me. Oof. Um, uh, I hate all of this. I really do. Um, I'm going to move uh, my stronger strength, forty seventh armor, um, over here. Yeah, that's what I do for the moment. Um, I'm going to move this infantry into this sock here. Mm -hmm. Boy, that armor's still kind of in, way out there, but oh well. Hey, I'll get Strubber. Can you guys hear me? Mm-hmm. You can? Yep. All right. So I've been trying to join in on the conversation for the last 45 minutes, but I am um, an idiot. And I, fig I figured he'd want to yell at me about something. <laughs> well, I, I just die in to answer questions. It's 25 miles per hex. I remember your colleague asked about that. So that's the scale. Okay. I, what I found out on my phone is I can't have Voight to both the streaming, the audio going, talking hmm. to the air mode. Did you have any other urgent questions, though, that I can jump in on? Well, maybe you can just confirm a suspicion for me um, on uh, the decisions on the full strength combat values on a few of these units to make it so that the... Uh, um, odds ratios weren't too explosive at start. There's just a couple of these where I'm going, I don't have enough. <laughs> yeah, that's a design intent. The Germans were so short on infantry in this period of the war, and, and most of the units start at full tree. 
but um, there's just so few, and, and you'll find that as you once you lose two or three German units, you're hard pressed to even hold one. Yeah, Is well, you're referring to? well, and and on the history here, of course, right with you know the amount of ground the Soviets gained, like you know, I I know I need to be covering a lot of ground. I need to be attacking a lot to work through and get to Kursk. I need two more engaged turns at least, right, to do this. And yeah. and I can feel myself running out of gas, literally and figuratively, right? That's the intent. <laughs> <laughs> and that turn two armor you lost is being sent to Sicily because the Allied invasion. Oh, well, yeah, thanks, Sicily. Sicily. <laughs> yeah, and, and I feel a little bit, so I, I, you probably saw on the stream before you hopped on to voice about me putting 2nd SS Panzer in, in, uh, kind of out with its neck out there. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to lose a step or two on Panzer, and that's going to kill me. <clears throat> yeah. But but that's the only way I can maybe make a pocket here, right, and and exploit something. Like, I can see a thin part here next turn. <laughs> if. <laughs> and it's really difficult to advance with the Zoke rules without advancing two hexes that have second SS, the Gross Deutschland unit to the left of it, advanced together, both taking hex. That's the only way you can... It's all, yeah. Just so hard, and so in play test, no one's actually captured curse. One player got with it, got adjacent to it. It's just so hard. Yeah, yeah, and so you know the, the design allows for it, the counterfactuals in the yeah. pre-turn setup on moving where the objective is, right? And so did a lot of the play tests for the German player involve going after something else. Yes, going after something else or going on a defensive right away. Hmm. Well, fascinating. Well, I think I'll be going on a defensive here shortly. Uh, <laughs> whether Sorry I want to spoil the game. Keep enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, with that, um, I am done with all the German movements to um, shore up my lines or get people to where I want them to be for subsequent offensives. So with that... Um, uh, we are now on the Soviet replacement phase and you okay. will be getting four and two. However, um, you are going to be, uh, then taking away two of each. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. I did spend that point to go back up to the engage cause why not? <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I did it anyway. Now, uh, um, remember, you can also bring in your eliminated units. Oh, okay. And how do I do that? I didn't quite... Like I said, I, I glanced at the rules. I did not mm -hmm. do a solo play before. So. No, that's fine. Um, you know, this is... Uh, it's it's section... Um, it's replacement. It's the same as the others. But one of the things that you can do is you can bring in uh, replacement units instead of fielding replacements on the line. I, I give that to you as a may or can. I don't know if it's something that you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. Because you've got a lot of thin spots on the line right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you're going on the offensive, right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you may um, bring in a um, um, uh, a half step, right? You may bring in a unit at reduced strength um, uh, along the red border um, mm -hmm. in an empty hex, not in Izak, or in an empty friendly controlled city. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'll do that this turn, but that's good to know. Um, the other restriction on bringing in units is they have to be at a location as close as they can to the rest of their core. Pre-divisional integrity? Yeah, they this so whatever town or border hex is close to as many of their... Other Yeah, so um, super with that, for instance, if you wanted to bring in a, a southern front unit as a replacement, you would not be bringing him up, you know, uh, yeah. into the pocket, right? He's got to come yeah. up near his near his buddies. Yep, okay. So talk through your thought process here as you're placing your steps. Well, well, um... Since you you did point out that I don't necessarily have to just cancel 
the the two tank steps I get, I can just redistribute those if I feel like it, um, which I think I might do, um, because the unit in 2006 is not doing much right now. It's just hanging out in a town, um, and I could really use that armor power somewhere else. And in fact, that's not a, a may, that's a must. You, you uh, must place two steps and you must remove two steps. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and flip him. Um, don't know if I want to flip that or not. Uh, I'm looking at 1703. Uh, that's still not good. Though I could really use... Um, so at that strength, I don't do anything there, right? I can't get enough yeah. combat factors. And that, to... that, that weakens my northern line too much, I think. Um, what I'm worried about is any potential breakthroughs down in, like... I know you'd be attacking across a river. Well, maybe that wouldn't be able to break through, because you'd still be attacking across the river still be attacking into a fortification so if you um, reduce him to six combat factors at the moment 18 to 6 would be a uh three to one with um a one shift for defensive uh fortification to two to one which mm -hmm. is you know 50 50 for me right mm -hmm. mm. The Russian for to do a whole have so uh, you're cutting out. I can't quite hear you. Oh, uh, for the Russians, you can do a lot more low odds attacks to try to make a hole and exploit them mm. because you have so many more units. Might be a multi turn process. Mm hmm. So the VPs that you're going to be going for is super uh, uh, as you get to the point where you're starting to push me back are all the cities mm -hmm. with the red star on them, right? Kharkov, yeah. Swan. Yep. Um, I'm just not seeing where I could really do much right now. But I do I do have somewhat of a plan. I mean, I, I actually might just leave you in that pocket and see if I can't push you out of... Um, oh, that's a city, though. That's Belgrade. Uh, attacking into a city is probably not what I want to be doing. Oh, no effect. Um, I'll also note that you have a nice juicy target. Granted, it's a very strong one, but it's out of communication. My second SS Panzer. Oh, I didn't realize those were out of. They were out of communication. Yeah, I've got his neck stuck out there. It's a strong unit, but if you can crack it, it's really hard for me to get Panzer replacements if you look at my reinforcement schedule, particularly if I want to be on the offensive. Mm, mm Yeah, and I don't want to weaken any of the units um, in 2013 or, or 2112, because then you could um, use that assault marker and bring in extra power, and then that would put you way too close to Kursk. True, but for the moment, I have one of those in my pocket, period, until mm. the end of August. Ah, okay. Ah, I see that now. Okay. Yeah, and keep in mind, you're getting two next turn.
So Trevor, while he's considering this, maybe you can uh, answer a question for me. One of my personal um, uh, lemmas or, or hypotheses is that, you know, a litmus test for a good historical war game is that, you know, given historically representative inputs that you do get historically representative outputs, right? Like that the, the factual scenario is one of the outputs uh, of the game. Um, even if it was an odd situation that but that's still in the realm of the possible how, how would you say that that this game holds up to that perspective yeah it actually does pretty well in terms of creating if you start on turn one like you did it's fairly easy for the to get capture two hexes bold which is historical results it's very difficult to go just because the soviets have so many strength germans start losing replacement or they don't gain as much so it's hard to make trevor so you're I coming in broken still... by the way oh it is okay sorry so um does produce historical results then of course you had to turn this a through d which make it possible to model be different but much of the game is that the soviet counter following first how the Germans react to that. And of course the Germans had very different about whether they and whether they should do a mobile instead on this backhand blow that was done six Did that all come through okay? Uh, most of it trailed off on the end there, but you know, I, I I think I get and I I based on what I'm seeing here, I I concur with all this. You know, I, I love historical war games as a chance to understand and 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 feel the strategic problem and dilemma of the commanders at at, at the time, and and uh, um, you know, I, I I suspect I'm I'm feeling um, something that's somewhat under the center of the bell curve here, right? On <laughs> trying to get towards Kursk and and running out of running out of steam. Um, how are we getting there, Super? With the, uh, the stuff? Uh, you see, I, I'm not sure because I I want to I want to make an attack. Um, I want to use one of those offensive markers, um, but at the same time, I still need to take one more uh, armor loss. Um, let's see that. I, I think I'll take it right here at. Uh, let's see, that is 2007, because he's still in a forest. Um, you'd only be able to get six, 16 to 6. It's fortified. Yep, I think that works. And I think this is another good thing on, on just gaming in general, um, let alone historical gaming, on having... Um, you know, uh, problematic choices, right? Like choices that, you know, there's not uh, objectively a right or wrong answers. Which of the least evils do you pursue? Or or having more things that you want or need to do in a turn than the ability to do them. Uh, and so you're having to prioritize and hedge and, and take risks. Uh, you know, those are all, you know, brilliant, brilliant aspects of uh, gaming regardless of the genre. And I'm feeling that here. In fact, I'm feeling a lot of chess here actually more than anything else i don't know super if you'd agree with that but i i, I think um yeah uh also i'm getting sort of the the push and pull um sort of almost negative consequences mitigation as part of the the overall feel just because there are no good options uh, especially for the germans as they're trying to push towards kursk and honestly that reminds me a lot of the feel that i get from twilight struggle which is one of my favorite games because it, it's just this out of a list of you know these historical options which one can you maybe try to change history with um and i did go ahead and flip uh hex 2215 and 2318 um, okay. as my plus two and now i need to do infantry i am so sorry for being so slow Hey, you know, all gaming's good gaming, and uh, you know we'll get through however many turns we get through, right? Mm -hmm. So you get four infantry hexes, uh, pluses, and then then you must take away two. Yep. Yeah, my 
jump in and comment on your discussion about challenges and the decision. Go for it. Posture selection section, segment is probably the most challenging for most players because it's not counterintuitive that by choosing to go into combat that you're going to lose even before you get into it. And so using that engage posture is very, the Germans lose one armor and one infantry and the Soviets lose two of each. It's just by going into doing an offensive style act or combat. Not intuitive in most war games, but that's what we saw in the research is so much just by moving units to combat long distances, you lost strength. And so that is the toughest choice for both players is you always want to go to pause so that you gain replacements. And that can be a trap for the Russians if they do too much pause they, before they can acquire the. Well, and with pausing, you're also really dealing with the clock, right? Like anytime you go back to pause, you're not on the offensive and you have to work your way back up to engagement or have to spend resources for it, right? Good point. Yep. Okay, I think I did something wrong here. What's that? Um, I'm trying to go back and forth on what I did. Hex. Okay, I flipped that one. And I think I flipped... 24... It should be up four and down two when you're satisfied with it. And while you're looking at that okay. real quick, Trevor, one more thing for you. Um, we've got... Bravo in the chat on Discord, throwing out some general questions about context here in terms so of. I should get, then I should get two more ups, right? Should be plus four and then minus two. Oh, plus four then minus two. Correct. Okay. Oh no, I lost. I lost track of which ones I I plused and which ones I minused. Nope, that's fine. So long as you're, uh, you know, right. thinking that you're close to the par here, I I'm not gonna, you know, uh, quibble. I think it's two more. All right. So, uh, uh, Trevor, real quick, a question from Bravo in the chat, which is, you know, looking at, you know, since we're talking about cores and armies here, you know, uh, and, and, you know, I got this huge front of contiguous counters, right? Uh, and, and we're mm -hmm. looking at the scale is, is, is um, historically, what type of oh, person is in the that. role of the player? Like, what, what, what shoes are we filling here that's looking at this line of counters north to south across the front? Yeah, so we're looking at, at two thirds of the Russian front at this long. So essentially, you have army groups south of them, and as well as eight Soviet fronts. So you're really looking at OKH as the command for the Germans, because you have two different army group commanders uh, working together side by side. And then the Stavka would be the command structure for the Soviets. And of course, none of those is just one person at the for both, but um, it's more than just. Or senior command, even at Kursk, they're the Northland, everybody different world in the South. Hot and von yeah, and so we're really kind of getting at you know the supreme levels of command here for both of these belligerents, and so for the, everyone with a more Western perspective, I mean, you're you're really kind of in the shoes of an Eisenhower, really, right? Like shape. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, super. How are we looking? All right, I'm going to armor and rail movement. Okay. Um, I don't really have any moves that I really want to make, except um, I can use this infantry rail to get to... I don't know if I want to move up that far or not, though. That might, might hurt me in the end. I'm not sure. Um, I'll just move this unit from Moscow up here. No, I think he's going to have to end on a rail. Okay, so he's going to have to end on a... Uh-oh. How do I undo that? Movement? No, that's fine. I mean, that that follows the rail through 2204, 2104. I mean, there's a rail there. Am I allowed to move there on a rail even though it's into a forest? Yeah, it's on a rail. Okay, good. Um, That's the only movement I want to make. All right. Now to the combats, and this is where I will be declaring offensives now do i declare i'm attacking or and then declare offensives or or what order is that supposed to be doing am i just supposed to do that i mean 
My re recollection is that you declare all attacks, all hexes in which attacks are going to happen. And then you may declare offensives when we got to resolve it. That's okay. <clears throat> my recollection, um, at least. Sound all right. Is that again, Trevor? You would declare the offensive, this declare the attack. So there's not supposed to be any surprise there. It should be these things to these to orchestrate pretty much. Just yeah, that makes sense. And so, so do that at the same time. And that really does get us to a time frame of scale and, and size here, again, with the scale of the game, right? These turns are three, roughly three weeks, uh, and the size of these units are armies and cores. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I like the deliberate, um, you know, stated attacks the whole way here to prevent a level of dynamis dynamicism that you may find at a scale of a game with shorter turns, uh, one week or two weeks, um, in smaller units, uh, which would not be reflective of uh, uh, combat at this scale. Oh, um, did you? I, I did. We want to go ahead and ask Trevor about the um, uh, offensive markers and the difference between being on the line and behind the line. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, the uh, one question in the rules, uh, and we we identify something that may be a difference between rules as written, rules as intended, which is um, the uh, you know the adjacency requirement uh, um, is is clear for using being involved in an offensive as a rear echelon unit. It's not explicitly stated that that unit must not be in an EZOC, but given the description of being in the rear echelon and, and thematically about bringing a, a unit that's in reserve forward, uh, we thought that that would be a requirement that a unit not be in an EZOC to participate um, and provide a column shift in, a, in, in offensive. Uh, is that what was intended? Very close. So they have to be adjacent to the armor unit or the shock army that's the first attack. And they cannot be adjacent to the XB. But they could be in an EZOC to a different unit, as long as they're not an EZOC of your attack. I see. So they can't be adjacent to the unit that where the attack is happening, but they may be in an EZOC. So somebody could essentially shift line over i'm thinking about american football re re references here where <laughs> a guy comes over on so, the line a little bit so uh in this case if you look at um i placed a marker in let's see 2317 um and let's say i wanted to attack um the 10-6 tank unit um and then bringing in my adjacent 12-5 tank unit that is not in the uh, not in the rear um, is not adjacent to my attacking target but however is adjacent to the offensive unit that I've marked sounds like it would work to me well since um, Alec didn't use that I'm not going to just for fairness sake but uh, going forward, that actually would work mechanically then? Yeah, now if it happened to be adjacent to the hex that's being attacked, it would just throw its combat. Yeah. But it could be an EZOC of another unit, but not attack that unit. Instead, be reserved to it's adjacent to Okay. Your... So, Super, is that attack going for the 5-4 infantry near Kharkov? Um... Uh, uh probably. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I, I was just as an example. I was just the the example that popped to my head was, you know, or you know, e e going at the infantry with, um, the twelve five tank unit in twenty two sixteen, because it's also in an ezoc, but is not um, is on the line, I guess. Yeah, and so the thing for you to to be carefully manage here is um, uh, army integrity, right? Uh, where ah, yeah. where the offensives are army group offensives here, right? Not not um, you know the entire command offensive, and so mm -hmm. so that's on a yellow unit, right? For mm -hmm. SDP, so you'll you'll need to make sure that what you are bringing in is the yellow. Mm -hmm. All the units have to be the same. For 
That's right. That makes sense. And that's a really interesting thing that's hard to do in, 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 in wargaming. And I see a lot of designers doing different approaches to that is, you know, from, from a real conflict standpoint, doctrinally, of most militaries have very rigid, you know, integrity of command echelons, right? And then you get it to a table and you start playing a game and you, things start going all over the place. And, and so most of the attempts to enforce that... Um, uh, the more heavy-handed just add rules, right, uh, and artificialities. Uh, and so that's always a delicate balance on how, how do you influence player behavior towards the factual uh, versus the gameism. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if we've found the holy grail of the right answer to that yet, but that's always, you know, a really hard problem. Okay, so I should start writing these out now that I've placed these markers. Yeah, where are you attacking? Um... I will be attacking 2108. Um, I will also be attacking um, 2115. Um, is my text not showing up? No, it is. I just did that simultaneously with you. I oh, think. okay. Um, I'll also be attacking twenty-one seventeen. A lot of twenty-ones here. That's where the front is. Yep. Um. I don't. I, well, maybe I do. Maybe I try and go for a low percentage and just see what happens. Um, I'll also be attacking twenty-six twenty-two. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So now remember on twenty six twenty two, I'm 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 a big fan. You've got a ten four and a twelve five there, so I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident with that. Uh, I uh, you are across a river into a fortification into rugged. Yeah, that's that's why I was a little worried, but uh, I figure I'll take the risk. So, okay. Um. All right, so going. I'm gonna go back and start from the top. Um, so 2108. Okay. Where is that hex? So I'm going to bring in, sorry, it's funny. I, I have a math minor, but I'm terrible at mental math. Uh, now in this case, I, I, I'll point out a rulesism here because there will be someone on YouTube, uh, or Reddit that points this out to me at the moment. And, and I, I'd say, let's go ahead and, and allow it for flow of the game, um, is, the, there are eligibility requirements for placement of the offensive markers. Um, oh. And uh, I, I believe, um, and Trevor's there, and units able to receive them as being the locust of the offensive need to be... Ah, well, if that's the rule, then I'm going to play it by the rules. Well, so. let, me, let me just double check that so I don't talk you out of a strong attack on me. I was going to give it to you outright. Um, <laughs> um, I still make the attack with or without the offensive yes. markers. So the lead unit must be um, a armor or shock unit. And so that's going to be something with a tank silhouette or a dot in the middle. Uh, then I will not be using that offensive marker. Okay. Um, let me see. If I if I can retcon, can I Please place do. that offensive marker somewhere else? Okay. Please do. Um, not a whole lot of spots to really use that one. Yeah, and so the kind of the, the dual requirements, you know, so generally you're going to want it to be on an armor or shock in the front and that they are bringing in armor from the rear, right? Um, can they bring in folks that are not armor or is it just, let's see. It can be no, any unit. Any unit. The rear. I see. So you could have infantry in the back that are then in, uh, supplanting. Okay. Well, then... Um... So, for instance, if you wanted to do an attack against um, the uh, unit marked 1911, uh, he's currently sitting in Hex 2012 in the marsh, um, uh, you could have uh, your armor, your 12-6 armor, um, receive the offensive marker and have the understrength infantry behind add combat. You know, they'd each be a column. 
12 here. Ah, the marsh. There it is. So that would be three column shifts for all of the infantry adjacent to that tank unit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'll do that then. I mean... Yeah, because I... Oh, I see that other one back there in Curse. Yeah. Fun fact, it's okay. not actually this format, but senior military leaders do this frequently. Oh, uh, I know. I actually... Um... Actually, since we're recording the stream, I'll, I'll tell you later. Okay. I, I tend to keep my mouth shut anything public, but... <laughs> I, I keep my eyes on both sides of wargaming, both recreational and professional, and it's, it's fascinating, the, the uh, activity on the professional side. Um, which, by the way, this is topical for the time of our recording, which is January of 2011. Um, uh, Connections US 2021 is now accepting uh, proposals for um, uh, seminars and topics and panels uh, on the professional side. If any professional wargamers are out there looking to submit topics, uh, you know, the links are out there. So, uh, r Remind me to tell you about uh, what I do um, after the game. Fascinating. Uh, proceeding on. Proceeding on. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess I will also kind of retcon and attack um, into what was that? Uh, the marsh. Um, yeah, I just took that. 1911. Hex. Yep. Yep. 2012. Well, yeah, the unit is marked 1911. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go and start back up at the top. Um, and even though I messed up and put that on a uh, an infantry unit, I I'm still going to go ahead and try to make that attack into... Uh, where'd it go? 2108. Um, so that brings everything to... 2108? Mm-hmm. Eight plus eight. Divided by four, seven, and then that will be. Uh, Which X are we looking at right now? Uh, twenty one oh eight. I'm gonna bring in the twelve six, the eight, and the four. Brings me to twenty eight divided by four. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So yet, yet uh, seven combat fact is so seven to one. Uh, so yeah, that gets which is a off the the chart. It, and I don't believe there's any. Is there fortification on that side? On my side, I yes, that's fortification for me. Aha, German fortification. So that does put me down to six to one. Um, so there is. I don't think there is an off the chart on combat odds calculations prior to shifts. Um, I think if you are uh, are maxed, it goes to five. Let's see. Um, yeah, odds maybe may begin but above six to one or below seven to one. Um, reduce them to six to one. So you start on the six to one column, and then I reduce then you to five, five to one for fortification. Okay. All right. This is gonna hurt. Then I... Oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh. Oh. All right. Eliminated. Speaking hey, of holes in my line. First. <laughs> um, now, either infantry or that armor could advance, right? It's a fair question. I would think that any unit would uh, in this scale, but... Da, da, da. I'm, I'm just going to maintain the integrity with my own line and move up, move that, uh, the 61st up there. You know, was I making that up the entire time on advance after combat? Is there not an advance on this scale? Oh, huh? I didn't think to check. I just... Yeah, I'm skimming, I'm skimming over the pages. Um... Oh, no, there is advance. Um, step six of the combat procedure. So if the defending unit is no longer in the hex, one attacking unit may immediately move, regardless um, of movement allowances or terrain effects. So yeah, you can scoot anybody up there that you prefer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scoot that infantry uh, there. Uh... Okay. Maybe I 
I don't. Ah, I don't know if I want to leave a gap in my line or not. <laughs> you have uh, no for gap. Expedi for expediency's sake, um, well, I wanted to move that armor down, which would... You will get a full movement phase after combat. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to move the armor in instead. I forget that there's two movement phases. Um, okay, so that is resolved. And now we go to 2115. Ah, yes, the big... The Panzer unit. Scary SS Panzer unit. All right. So I got 44 against 16. Which is a 2 to 1? Yep, a 2 to 1. Um, you are out of communication. Which then gives you a one column shift. So that's one three to one. Shift. Then it goes back down because you're in a fortification. I'm not in my fortification. I'm in your fortification. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, in a friendly fortification, right? So, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm up to a three to one column. So this is funny. I just noticed a completely random German infantry unit down by the block. This see his ass off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll have to bring him up. All right, anyway. Okay, so the three to one, I'll go ahead and roll. That's your one reserve unit. Yeah, thanks. I get one. Uh, I got a four uh, exchange. Okay, so I lose. Uh, well, so this is going to be good for you. I lose eight combat factors. So you have to voluntarily reduce your steps to uh, get rid of eight combat factors. That's six. Then the infantry unit that was attacking? Yeah, I think I'm going to. Okay. I'd rather do that to the infantry than to the armor. And then all of my retreats go through an Ezoc, so that eliminates. Ah. So that was bad. Um, I'm going to move this unit up. And then get my... I'm trying to get my integrity back. I should not have moved these green units out of uh, that town. I should have moved them up to where the other guys were. Um, anyway. Then I will go to 2117. Yep, that's the unit marked 2117. Yep. And that's the one where I declared an offensive. Um, his, uh, whoops, sorry, I was trying to remove that counter to see what color he is. Double click, it's yellow. Oh, okay, it's yellow. Um, so I did get, I will get both of these infantry units. Um. Well, hold up, those, those, let me clear the movement. Yes, yeah. and potentially the armor if you want it. Um, we, you didn't in, in, include some armor that was, Correct. Um, Correct. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna include it. Okay. Um, even though game wise it's fine, I, I don't want to take advantage of a rule clarification later on. Okay. Um. Let me do some math. So I see it as four to one with two column shifts from the offensive. Okay. I'll just trust you on that. To speed the game up. Okay. Um, yeah, straight up four to one with two column shifts. So that puts you all the way up to six to one. All right. Two. All right. So at least I pushed you out. Nope, that eliminates me. No, nope, no, nope, you're uh, right. It pushes me out. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move up. Um, okay, and I will go to, let's see, I said 2622. Yeah, that's one is going to be, uh, let's see, 
22 plus 4, 26 to 4. Which is 6 to 1, which is good. And right? then and then I believe that's um, two column shifts for you because you're in a fortification and in rough terrain. <clears throat> and one more forever, so three. Oh, okay. So three to one. Four. Exchange. All right. So I'll you must that. reduce at least two steps of something. Ugh. Or two factors. Not, uh... That's no, I don't really want to eliminate that uh, unit, so I'll just take the five factors from my shock troops. Ooh. Ouch. And you retreat yeah. me to, to uh, Texas. Okay. Mess with your army integrity. Thanks. <laughs> um, do I want to make myself into a salient with that? I don't know. <laughs> um... You, you could armor? bring in the armor and move the shock army around behind the river in your movement. Yeah, I could. Yep, I'll do that then. Um, and then I think there was one more I declared after that. Yeah, you and did. It was um, 1911. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the unit yep. marked 1911, which is in uh, the Marsh and Hex 2012. Um, so that is, let's see what, ah, what power is underneath that tw 12? Okay. Yeah, so I, 20, I, I see 32 factors against four. Boy, even I, I need a calculator for that one. So, yeah, so you're at eight to one. So that's six to one at the outset. Mm -hmm. But you don't even then, need the offensive, to be honest with you. No, I didn't. There's no I reductions. Didn't anyway. Go ahead and pocket that counter again. There's no reduction. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. All right. All right. Um, so I'll just go ahead and roll it six to one. Two. <laughs> Still, Rolling like a champ here. Defender retreat and loss DRL. Um, so I'll lose a step and then retreat. So... Uh, there we go. Was he already reduced? Um, yeah, I, he was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and then I will go ahead and advance this armor up there. All right. Those were the declared attacks. Do you see any that you want to retcon? Nope. All right. Now you're in your movement. Straighten out your line. Boy, and if you really wanted to, like, you could move your six tank uh, in one hex uh, closer. <laughs> I mean, he'd be out of communication, but boy, I mean, that would start to wedge oh, in my are, line. Are you talking about right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do that. I, I realized as soon as I placed that, I should probably move that away, and then I could move up to here. Uh-huh. <laughs> may set myself up for at least one victory point i don't know i don't know like uh, that guy himself is he's your spearhead right he's he's out of communication but that's a problem now um yeah and i need to do a little reorganizing um i need to get these guys back into where they should be One, two, three, four. It's amazing and... how quick the Russians go back on. Hmm? And historically, the German attack only. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the second half of that cut out. Oh, historically, the German attack only occurred on... until they ended it. So it's... Yeah, so he's still broken. I think what I was getting at, looking at the historical table, is historically the German attack did not last long. If you look at um, the historical postures, the uh, um, July 5th, turn 1, 
And it wasn't, again, until turn six in the game, October 1st, that there was an engage phase again. So it did not take long for the Germans to peter themselves out and then go on a defensive fight. Um, and looking at where the VPs come from in this game, um, you know, the... Uh, you know, the historical play may have been a better one for me, which was to sit and strengthen and make defensive problems for you and just try and maintain a status quo. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have a quick question for Trevor. Um, in, in your playtesting, what was the largest ever victory point margin? Nothing heard. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was on mute there. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, German wins were in the two, three, four range typically, and Russian wins were in 11, 12s. They, wow. Uh, it, it's possible if the Russians get multiple penetrations to really cause some hurt on the Germans. And to that point, you know, you're certainly through my line um, right now near Orel, right? And and I'm going to have to do some serious repositioning. Like, you are not thin there. I'm not about to break through and make a, my own encirclement. Um, and I'm thin in a couple of other places. Oh, in fact, you've almost got something near Kharkov, right? Yeah, so I can see myself... Oh, and, right, and Stalino. So... I can see myself. You've got three holes in my line right now. Yep. <laughs> we did have one play test game where we Russians went rampant on the offensive and the Germans snuck to Moscow. So <laughs> there does need to be line integrity on the Soviet side. Yeah, I, I remember as I skimmed through the, the, the rules... And if I would have known that a designer would be on the stream, I would have read the rules a lot better <laughs> before, <laughs> before we started. Um, that Moscow was instant victory for uh, the Germans, which makes sense, of course. But uh, uh, yeah. that's that's all my movement. All right, and let's see here. Um, which gets us then to the housekeeping phase, which is effectively you know making the current posture the previous posture and advancing the turn marker which would get us into turn three. So um, at this point uh, where we are in, in the stream and in the evening, I, I think, um, uh, Super, I, I think we, uh, I don't know what you think, but this might be a good point for us to kind of, you know, uh, have a break and, and do a save of the Vassal file, first of all. Sure. So we yep. pick, pick it back up. It might be good to call on a good increment of time and maybe provide, you know, some of our, our thoughts each. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll give two real quick. And, and my first one is um, that, that observation that I had with chess. And this is really what I love about games where there's not a stacking rule, or as in the stacking rule is don't stack, um, is, is that it feels a lot more like chess, where you are very positional on, you know, where is my strength and what spaces that I currently occupy are covered by my other units and where am I able to uh, attack on the opponent's line? Like, you know, I, I, I um, you know, had to engage a lot of my chess thinking in that case, like, like in a war game, more so than I do when I've got big stacks, right? And I'm, I'm working through something, you know, uh, more air quotes complicated um, than, than that, uh, which, which I think is good and gets us to the point of a strength of magazine games. Right, which is is that the um, uh, the complexity level then gets low enough where the decisions are fairly apparent, and, and so th there there's a pull there, right? This this isn't a low counter density game per se, despite the fact that there's no stacking. We've got a hundred you know chits on the map right now, and so there's a lot of numbers printed on chits at the board. But when you break down your thinking, and you start looking at all of these two to ones and three to ones and four to ones that you're looking at, 
And, you know, the common factor here of four on most of these um, until you get to the underpowered German infantry, um, that that the, the math becomes pretty quick. And, and for those new to wargaming watching the, the, the stream, you know, that, that will continue to become a theme here is, is that most war games, most modern war games, most well-designed war games um, will have repeated processes that you then end up doing and get a really good feel for. And so then you can then get take a look at a board and find the spots where you in, into it that you have strength or that you don't. And, and I think that those are both both really good. Um, the, you know, one of the common, you know, criticisms of magazine games, which one may be, you know, tempted to levy at a game like this, um, is it would be, you know, one of testing or balance. I, I certainly would say that that would, um, the testing argument would, would appear to fall flat here, given that, as was mentioned, um, one has to balance the historical fact versus the game design, right? Um, a, a, a good game might have, you know, um, the Germans, you know, achieving all their objectives half the time, the Russians have achieving all their objectives half the time. But, but historically, you know, we are doing a historical conflict simulation here, right? Um, I should feel pressured and under the gun and like, you know, the, the the senior political leadership in my country has unrealistic expectations of me this entire time. Like that's that's part of this. <laughs> that's part of this experience. And and maybe it is an outlier that I achieve significant strategic uh, victories. Um, and that can be fine. So so um, you know, uh, all in all, um, as with you know many of GMTs uh, or or rather um, RBMs recent. Um, magazine productions you know this this just feels like a a, a great uh, great experience and I've, I've had fun working through this and and i'll save this and look forward to you know picking up the rest of the play and watching my lines absolutely collapse uh here over the next three turns well i sure had a lot of fun as well and i am so excited to get my physical copy in the mail here um in a week or so um like i said uh kind of in the the discord and on I don't know if I said it in the subreddit, but I, I'm looking for something that um, might look scary to non-war gamers, but once they kind of get past it, it's not that scary. Um, I'm not springing ASL on any of my friends anymore. That's how I lose friends. <laughs> um, so I, I'm having a great time, and I really enjoy this game. So. Well, and a special thank you, of course, uh, for uh, you know game game designer here, Trevor Bender, for joining us uh, and uh, you know sharing sharing his time and his perspectives. And uh, you know you're you're always welcome here in our community and and uh, on, on the stream. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, thank you both uh, for letting me participate. And I'm glad to see that the game threw some mental puzzles your way as you thought about what to do. Uh, just as a reminder, the game is, is based on Battle for Moscow, which is a slightly simpler presentation. It's an introductory game from the 1980s, and it's still available. came out in C3I number 25. That's an option to, to introduce people to a very simple way in. It's almost the same system and only 40 count. Well, excellent. Well, again, this has been... Uh, you know, Super Vehicle and uh, Alec MG of Reddit's slash r slash Hex Encounter community. Uh, everyone watching the stream is always welcome to join us and join the community uh, uh, for more discussion and sharing of experiences on tabletop conflict simulation Hex Encounter um, war games. Uh, with that, um, thank you all for your time. Thank and thank you for joining us. Good night.